Hello and welcome to a new reading vlog. I'm going to try and get back in the groove of daily vlogging. Usually I this year I've been like vlogging for a book or something like that or a readathon, but I just want to do a weekly vlog just to see how it feels because I haven't done one in a while. And this is also because it's fall, even though it's so hot out. Um, and I want to just read all the spooky books. So first up, what I'm reading right now that is very creepy and literally gives me the chills. Gives me the chills. Is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix. I'm on 74% and I have about three hours left and I'm listening to it on 2.5 speed. I usually can go between 2.5 and 3 depending on the narrator. So with this one, I'll probably finish it either like today or tomorrow and like the plot twist we just got to. <sighs> Crazy. It's a little gory. It's fun. It's very fun. But like, yeah, definitely scary. And I... I'm like, I just need to embrace my love of horror and like really branch out into the genre. Like I feel like I'm still taking baby steps, but alas. And I also really love like YA horrors specifically. So I'm gonna be picking up Where Darkness Blooms. I, the book is upstairs and I don't feel like going and get it right now. But um, for that one, I'm excited because it's like sunflower horror. And I feel like sunflowers are a good horror motif for like late summer, early fall, because it's still hot out, but I can still get my fix of spookiness. So that's that. And in the meantime, on my Kindle, I'm reading, um, let's see. I'm like in an alien romance mood lately. So I'm reading Clay by the Horde King by Zoe Draven. Zoe Draven is becoming one of my favorite sci-fi authors. This Horde King world, it's kind of based on the Dothraki from Game of Thrones. And it's just like so intricate and really cool. Like they have their own language and this relationship is really fun. We have Nell who's caught hunting um, in the like alien territory where she shouldn't be because the animals are sacred to them. So she gets claimed by the Horde King. That's all I'm going to say, and I don't know what it is, but this year, Alien Romance has been speaking to me, and I'm here for it. I also, I did my nails with press-ons, and I've gone back and forth on press-ons, but I'm going to try and, like, actually commit to them, because I just love having my nails done. I feel so, like, I just feel so good with them done, and I love to tap, tap, tap on things, um, so I'll be continuing to do that. That's all for now. Hello. So, it's Friday morning, and I am currently on page 103 of where darkness blooms this is creepy sunflowers we're following four girls after their mothers disappear and it's kind of interesting because the chapters rotate so like every fourth chapter is that girl they're all kind of like hiding secrets from one another basically like all their fathers left them so all the mothers moved in together and all the daughters live together so now the oldest one like has guardianship of all of them after their mothers disappeared and apparently like in this town surrounded by sunflower fields in the middle of kansas like women go missing all the time and so i think we're just like finally starting to kind of like dig in to what's happening i'm like ready for more horror and gore things to happen but i think we're slowly creeping towards that at first i was like a little confused following all the different perspectives but i kindly have gotten all their voices at down pat and so it's very interesting seeing how like all these girls lives intersect and the writing is also very good in this just you know creating a nice picture and i think this is really good to read for this like late summer where i want it to be fall because some flowers are just kind of like a late summer flower up here anyways so it kind of gives me that vibe so i'm definitely gonna read a little bit more of this today but i might set it aside for the weekend just because i like to dedicate my weekends to books that i like really really want to read and just like sit down and read for a long time whereas this book is kind of a book that i feel like i can you know take a little bit longer to read so i'm also in the middle of the only one left by riley sager which is about this woman that killed her whole family and now she's in her 70s and she's kind of telling her home aid like what actually happened by typing it on a typewriter and it's like this creepy mansion on the cliffs in maine 35 percent in so good so far i love listening to horror books on audio or like thrillers on audio it just really ups the suspense for me and just makes me feel more immersed so i've been listening to that on my drive however olivia rodrigo's new album dropped today so i will not be listening to it on my drive to work so what i want to focus on this weekend is i'm not sure if i'm going to pick up assistance to the Vi villain by hannah nicole Marer or 
Foxglove by Adeline Grace first, but these are the two books that I'm really feeling. I feel like this one I can read so fast. So I, but like Foxglove is one of my most anticipated books of the year. So I actually think I, I have convinced myself I'm gonna probably pick this one up first. And then if I finish this, move on to Assistant to the Villain, but then I also am still in the middle where Darkest Bloom. So somehow now I'm in the middle of three books, but that's my update for now. Okay, this light might be a little bit too dark, but we're gonna roll with it. I'm here to give an update. Everything is kind of dreary right now because it's raining, but that means it's perfect reading weather. So I started Assistant to the Villain last night and I'm literally so obsessed with it. I'm so obsessed with it. it if you just want to be like giggling, kicking, screaming, like going like this with your legs, squealing, like that is what this book feels like to me. It, I saw reviews that it's no spice, which is totally fine. Um, but it's still like new adult like age range because the characters are older but i honestly don't think that the story needs spice because it's so sweet it's so sweet so we have evie and it's like this if you have ever seen the movie ella enchanted where it's set in like this medieval kingdom with magic but it's just funny and like that kind of humor like that is what this book reminded me of and i honestly want to rewatch ella enchanted right now because i freaking loved that book and one of gail carson levine's other books the two princes of bemar you know i don't know if the books were as funny as the movie but the movie was great so funny obsessed with it as a kid and like I want to rewatch it now because this is giving me all the same feelings but like literally Evie gets hired to be the assistant to someone that is literally known as the villain in this kingdom and the villain like spends his days plotting evil doings and like sometimes Evie comes into work and they're just like heads hanging from the ceiling it's so great and it's just like so funny and cute and like I'm just giggling the whole time I'm reading this like I need you all to read this because I'm obsessed I'm obsessed it can't be helped. I love this. So I just ordered some garlic noodles for dinner after I spent the day going to the gym. Then I got a haircut because that's the only time I ever like do any styling to my hair is when I get a haircut. So I'm feeling so fresh because I had like three inches of just like dead hair that needed to go. Um, and, and then I cleaned my apartment, which being an adult is annoying but i feel so much better now that it's clean and so it's time to just curl up and relax with my book for the night and maybe watch ellen chanted who knows as you wish as you wish as you wish pals as you can see I look all nice because I just filmed a video so might as well continue the vlog here while I'm all dolled up but last night I finished Assistant to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Morer and I watched The Princess Bride you probably saw a clip of that earlier oh my god I have not seen that movie in a few years and every time I watch it it's just so cute and definitely this book literally made me want to watch like everything that's fantasy comedy and I was like what things can I watch or read that are like that definitely looking for Rex if you have them but I love this I definitely think this will be a top book of the year for me because I'm obsessed I'm obsessed I love it and I want like everything to do with this oh my god I'm just I can't wait and it and another cliffhanger and I need the next one now oh my god oh my gosh I yeah wow this just made me it kicked my feet giggling the whole time like it just made me so happy and there's no spice in this by the way 
it's definitely adult because their like thoughts are adult like oh my god her boobs look so good oh my god i definitely want to like dang her you know but like there was no spice in it maybe there will be spice in book two but like it didn't need it it was just so strong in the found family and just like that like kind of comedy that is just like this ridiculous situation and it's just like this fantasy comedy brand very similar to the kind of humor in the princess bride and uh, i just loved it i just loved it and i'm obsessed <sighs> So yeah, Evie and the villain, I will be thinking about them for a long time because this book just made me so happy. And then next, just dove right into the spooky scary times, we have Fox Glove by Adeline Grace. And I am like fully annotating. I haven't like fully annotated with this system in a while. I've been kind of annotating on vibes. Yes, I know I need to make an annotation guide video. Um, that's like three years late at this point. I've never made it. I don't know. I just feel like I'm not that good at like explaining it or like maybe it'd be too short, but I think I think I can do the video. So um, bully me in the comments to actually make that and I will. Uh, but yeah, so in this story, obviously Death was the main character in Belladonna. If you don't know, Belladonna, my, one of my favorite books of last year, if not, I think it was my number one book of last year, to be honest. Um, we follow Signa. She can see Death and death kind of follows her and she goes to this manor which is her latest guardian and she ends up with this family that has a lot of drama. The mother just died, the father is drowning his grief and partying, the daughter is sick with the same thing that the mother was sick with and the son is like what do I do with all this? And Signa gets thrust into their, their drama and then the ghost of the mother comes to her since she has the ability to see death and is like hey I was murdered like can you please figure out who did it and so it's like a murder mystery gothic fantasy romance. And it was amazing. I loved it. And so I'm so excited for the sequel. Already the writing is so beautiful. But in this book, um, Death's brother Fate plays a role. And I already have like a decent amount of tabs going. It's kind of hard to see on camera. But yeah, I'm only on page 34. I ended up just being really busy today with doing like booktube content stuff um, and chores and just like general life maintenance things. So I'm not like upset that I didn't read too much more of this. I don't know how much I'm going to get done tonight either because I think I'm going to focus more on like editing the video I just filmed and making sure that's all good so I have time to read, more time to read during the week. But yeah, I am just here for the vibe so far and I love them. Okay, I wanted to hop on really quick because I just finished the audiobook for The Only One Left by Riley Sager and this might be one of my favorite thrillers I've ever read. Honestly, the amount of twists and turns that this book took were astronomical, and I honestly did not predict the ending at all. I honestly thought that I had the ending down, and like literally every time you think it's like the last reveal and it can't get any crazier, it does, and I just love the story. It had the book within a book but also unreliable narrator and it was just so like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. I almost want to get a physical copy like I probably will pick up a physical copy when it's in paperback and like so I can reread it and like see where I missed the hints but oh my god it was such an incredible experience reading this and I I don't know I just like really was enchanted with the whole thing and it kept me on the edge of my seat for certain for certain in terms of other reading I really haven't read that much I am still on page 34 of Foxglove because on Sunday I just spent the day doing like more booktube kind of housekeeping things like filming stuff and editing and then last night I was watching football because I'm trying to get more into football this year so I didn't really read this so tonight tonight though I'm gonna make it a priority to read this book especially because I didn't work out so I have way more time to read tonight. Um, I do have a headache because I've been re wearing these glasses lately but they're definitely not the right prescription and I'm like out of contacts. I just like I need to buy more but I'm just lazy so I like need to figure out that situation but I think I'm gonna buy new glasses with my updated prescription and also get more contacts but that's just a side note of why I've been having a lot of headaches because it's not the right prescription um, but yeah this book, me and her, we're gonna spend a lot of time together tonight. Hello pals, so something kind of unexpected and exciting happened and the brand Halara 
who are famous for their athleisure dress reached out to me and asked if I wanted to get some pieces to try on on my channel. I am obviously a book channel but working out is my other love, my other hobby. So I said why not? And so I'm gonna try on some of the pieces for you guys. I'm so so excited and thank you to Laura for sending them to me. Alright guys, as we have established, I am not like a fashion or lifestyle blogger, so I don't really know how to show up these outfits. But first I have these black leggings with this white top. They're regular length. I did size up just because I didn't know how these were going to fit. Look at the back. It's so pretty. And these are like nice and lightweight. They have pockets. So you know what? I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with this. Try my best to show it off. So one of the things I've always wanted from Laura is one of these skirts. They're so cute. Look at it with the white top. Oh my gosh, it has this like cross stitch detailing or like cross detailing in the front. And of course, you got the pockets. I always wanted this for like if I'm going to an event of some sort or like Disney or something like that. And then if it gets cold, I have this like waffle crop hoodie which just feels so nice oh my goodness i can't believe this i'm in shock oh she's cute she's cute oh i feel so adorable in this outfit look at that oh yeah oh yeah i sized up because it's like pretty loose so it feels really nice but it's got like a short cut Okay, next besties are these blue pants that have this like cross waist and I think they're seven eighths, but I'm so short. So <laughs> I don't know how to show these off. Seven eighth pants are kind of just like regular pants on me. Sorry, this setup is not the best for like showing off an outfit. But anyways, they feel like really silky smooth. I love like the cross waist detail. I think it's so flattering and it has pockets, it has pockets. Okay, so now I have these like slate gray pants and this really cute pink like bra top, like long line sports bra and oh my gosh, the back, this is like a cute little twist tie. It's nice and open on the back if you want to, you know, show off the lats and again, these pants super fluttering come to a nice length and I'm gonna link all of the stuff in the description below okay now the final pair of leggings we have these crossways leggings I think it's the cloudful 3.0 fabric and it honestly does feel like a cloud it's so nice and I paired it with this like almost sage green top I want to say it's just like really cute long line sports bra. I am I got everything in a large. I usually wear me in large and sports stuff, but like I said, I wanted it to fit nicely and I didn't want to run into it being tight. So I just ordered everything in a large just in case. And usually I'm like concerned with things being too long on me, but these are actually fit pretty nicely, probably because I pulled them up and I think a lot of them are supposed to be 7 8 lengths which fits like normal people pants on me. So, feeling good. This is just like regular back, but it just supportive and feels cute. And then the last item I have to try on for you guys today is the Halara dress. It's so cute. When I go to Florida next, I'm totally bringing this, especially if I end up going to Disney with my family. I am so excited about this. Thank you so much, Halara, for sending me these clothes. I don't know why you did, but I appreciate it. My wardrobe is going to thrive because of this, because I have been needing new leggings and workout tops, and so I'm very excited. And I just feel so cute in all of these clothes. Hello, pals. So let me give you a little reading update. I am currently on page let's see 245 of foxglove so i just got to part two i am of course loving adeline grace's 
reading style. I'm a little bit mad because I've just been like, I'm so, it's so hard for me to like concentrate after work. So I haven't really read that much, but I read a decent portion yesterday. Look at all the tabs. So I'm gonna hopefully try and finish this today, but of course it's football Sunday. So there's just gonna be football on in my house all day. Um, and I'm trying to actually like pay attention to football and like learn more about it, you know? Anyways, so I'm on page 245. In the meantime, like I've had to do this thing at work in lab where I just like watch something for like an hour. So I bring my Kindle in with me and I've been reading Alien Romances. Um, I picked up this novella, Craving the Alien Vampire by Rose Singh, which is what it says it is. Um, I gave it two to three stars. Like it wasn't like a fully really realized world. I mean, it was a novella, but it wasn't my favorite. And then we have Claimed by the Hunter, a Zarkin Warrior book one by Lina Lee. I think this one's like a solid 3.5 stars. It's set on earth and basically there's this like bug apocalypse and we have these like alien worm alien warriors that come in to fight the plague it was an interesting setup it was an interesting setup but it wasn't my favorite and now i'm currently reading something else equally with an equally ridiculous title let's see i think it's saved by starlight or something like that um um stolen by starlight it's a cover um and these guys like change color based on their mood which is pretty cool and the king sees our main girl ada like at an auction because she was stole stolen away and he's like oh my god she's my mate and it's their story so it's like a very typical alien romance thing but you know what it helps pass the time while i am bored at work so anyways but today today is for reading more of foxglove and i I think that this story is going in a really interesting direction in terms of the new characters that we have introduced as well as Cigna's cousin Blythe having more of a role and I think I think that this book is kind of giving us a red herring at this halfway point because it's an interesting direction but I don't know if it's going to end the way that like everyone thinks it's going to end so I don't know I have some like feelings and hints of some foreshadowing that's been dropped along the way that I think things are gonna be twisted at the end hopefully so we'll see but of course I'm still liking Cigna and Death's dynamic as well as Cigna and Blythe they're like cousinly bond as well as our new character Fate that we have in here and how he also interacts with the cast so it's giving an interesting dynamic and definitely more things are happening and I'm gonna try and see like how it all goes but of course we still have like a murder mystery element and of course with these like gods death and fate and like as well as bridgerton because they are in like this proper 1800s-esque regency society so it's just a mix of all of those things and i love it so far so i am gonna update you guys later when i read more of this and we'll see how it goes It's late Sunday night. I'm super tired, so I'm gonna try and make this quick. But I did just finish Foxglove by Adeline Grace. I love Belladonna, and I feel like this book, I also loved it too. Five stars. It just continued with the very gothic suspense. I will say that Cigna and Death's story kind of took a back burner to an emerging storyline, and there's like two sets of storylines that are weaving together, and I think the next book is gonna focus more on different characters. Which is fine for me like i still love Cigna and death and i feel like there still will be a storyline to them but i feel like the main plot is going to shift to her cousin blythe which i don't mind i definitely am excited for wisteria i i don't know i just i feel like it makes sense i feel like it makes sense that we're weaving in characters arcs like other characters because i feel like Cigna and death's romance kind of played out within the first book so if it was just about them in the second book it just would have been overplayed a little bit so I like that we like weaved in other things and other plot lines so I'm excited about the direction that the series is going as always Adeline Grace's writing is just so beautiful you have like a murder mystery going on you have this like regency element of like society and you also just have these like gods like fate and death 
and Cigna and her cousin Blythe and like them just trying to navigate all of this. So there's like a lot of different threads, you could say, being weaved throughout the story and I feel like it just comes together beautifully. It's like lush, it's gothic, and it just has great pacing and I was kept so thoroughly entertained the whole time. No complaints. Loved it so, so much. And I also have this Barnes & Noble exclusive edition, which I love the pink flowers in contrast to the red. I ordered the UK cover of Foxglove too, so I will be getting that at some point. Um, I loved it. So yeah, I think I'm going to try doing more like weekly. I think this vlog was over the course of two weeks, but definitely more of like just daily what I'm vlogging because I find that these videos are really fun and are a great way to connect. So I look forward to more in the future, but I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video so far. Leave any sort of a flower in honor of Belladonna slash Foxglove if you've watched this far and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.